Hello everyone and welcome back to Mr. Anderson's Algebra 1 Lessons. Um, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how you would um, reduce some algebraic expressions, kind of like this. Um, we're going to be starting out with some real basic uh, expressions here and uh, we're going to do a couple examples and so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how you would start off um, with with reducing something if you see if you see this on your paper now um, when you're reducing something like this any type of fraction it's important to know that um, having a strong foundation in understanding um, what the greatest common factors are of numbers will really help you in this situation because how we would reduce something like this is to um, first take a look at what uh, the greatest common factor is between the numbers. And um, so what I tell my kids is something that's really important to be thinking about is the GCF of the numbers in the expression. So that's, that's a key thing to really be um, thinking about. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. and. Uh, I have my students um, ask themselves this question, what, what's the GCF of these two numbers right here? And, and we'll worry about the variables later. Um, so they always tell me, well, the greatest factor that three and six share is the number three. So I know that I can have uh, a three come out of each of those. Um, and so then and next I asked, well, what about the letters? What's the greatest factor that you can take out of these letters? And, and this is all coming after um, getting lots of practice with finding the GCF of algebraic expressions. And you can check out that video um, in the description or in the um, little card that pops up. But um, I asked them, what's the GCF of these uh, two variables? And so the common variable that they share is an n. And so then the question asks, well, well, how many n's do they share? Well, this n expression has three, and this n expression only has one. So the most n's that they share is just one. So this right here is the expression that I can take out. This actually represents, this, this right here actually represents the GCF between this one and this one. And that's really kind of important to remember. Um, so it's good to know that. Now another thing that's important is that this expression right here, if you were to simplify that, it'd actually be just one, which is important because um, we're trying to really find an equivalent fraction of this. If I multiply this expression by what I'm going to find over here, the reduced form, it should represent this, which is my ultimate goal. So I'm going to multiply that. And so now I ask my students, well, what do I have to have in this position over here to multiply to 3n to give me 6n cubed? Well. I know that if I multiply 2 to 3, I get 6. And then I say, well, what do I, what do I need to multiply n by to get n cubed? And they say, well, you need an n squared, Mr. Anderson. And I'm like, okay, cool. What happens on the bottom? Well, what do I need to multiply to 3n by to get 3n? Well, that's a real simple answer. That's just 1. So in this case, um, reduced form for my answer is going to be 2n squared. So that's the answer to this if I reduce it. And you can see that if I do 6 divided by 3, 3 goes into 6 two times. Okay? And if you think about it, asking you this kind of a question, division is asking you this kind of a question, 3 times what number equals 6. Well, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. I don't know if you've seen that before, but 
that's a, a good way to check yourself, okay? Let's take a look at this guy down here. Now again, I'm gonna start off by finding the GCF, and um, I need to find the greatest common factor between 13 and 11, and to be honest, 11 and 13 are both prime numbers, so really the only factor they share is one. So I'm gonna put that right there. And now I'm just taking a look at the variables. I know that they share an x, but it's how many x's they share is what I need to find. And in this case, I know they share four. They share four x's together, okay? So now, on top, one x to the fourth times what equals 11 x to the fourth? Well, that's just 11. And 1x to the 4th times what equals 13x to the 5th? Well, I know that that's going to be 13, and I know I need one more x. So this is your reduced form right there. Okay? I have one more for you guys today to take a look at real quick. And it's this guy. Just a little bit more difficult, a little more extra. I should say. So again, I need to find the GCF. And I know between 5 and 10, their common factor that they share is going to be 5. I know 5 is the greatest common factor they share. And now I need to find out what they have other variables in common. Well, I know they have an X in common. And I see there's a Y up here, but I don't see a Y down here. Um, so I can't take that out. So their GCF is 5X. Now over here, I have to find 5X times what equals 5XY cubed. Well, I already have the 5, I already have the X, all I have left is just y cubed. So y cubed times 5x gives me the top part. And the bottom part, I have 10x cubed. So I need to find the thing that I multiply by 5x to give me 10x cubed. Well, I know 2 times 5 is 10. And I need an x cubed. So I know x squared times x gives me x cubed. So this right here is my answer. Reduced form, 2x squared. There we go. So that's the answer. And again, thank you for watching. Um, this has been uh, Algebra Lessons with Matt, and uh, we just got done reducing algebraic expressions. I hope you enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos. It really helped me out. And uh, I hope you have